Look at that right there. That whole gardener fertilizer, that new fert that protein makes for flowers and stuff. It has got these jokers jamming. And how do you know when they need a little water? Look at those leaves right there. Let them tell you. See how they're wilted, kind of droopy? Give them a little water and they'll be perked up tomorrow. Still rocking and rolling right here. Looking good. And the test plot, one day a week watering, is still absolutely on fire right now. Bluegrass, we're mid-July, still rocking and rolling. And even the ryegrass is hanging in there pretty good. Hey there, it's Pete with GCI Turf. Hope you're having a great day today. I want to welcome you out here to my home. I'm out here on my test plot, uh, turf type tall fescue. Had this for, uh, how long have I had this? I've been in the home about 10 years. I think I renovated this particular spot maybe eight years ago, roughly. You can't tell it, you can't look at it and see the difference, and I can't either. The only way I know the difference is I actually did the work myself. There are five different mixes of different fescue blends in this area, and they're in strips going long ways, 1,500 square, or maybe 2,000 uh, square foot strips going long ways from me to the road and when you look at it you you have no idea they're all different varieties but i'm gonna i'm gonna make another video on that here real soon and kind of talk you through the different uh ones out here and it'll, it'll blow your mind when you see uh well, most people think they're supposed to look different but they don't they all look just alike so if you're new to the channel typically i'm going to show folks how to grow turf fertilizer, weed control, biostimulants, get your dirt right, helping you to relieve soil compaction, getting rid of uh, you know, hard areas in the yard, show you how to water, show you how to mow. I've uh, been in business for almost 20 years now. I own my own lawn care company, and I've kind of been doing this forever. I'm super peculiar about my turf and my yard. It has to look a certain way to me. It has to be as close to pristine as I can get it. And at the end of the day, it's just grass. You know, I try to give you that perspective too, that, you know, although you see Pete doing all this crazy stuff in the yard, and he's over the top anal about it, it's just grass. You walk on it, it's under your feet. So what I'm doing out here today is I'm gonna lay out my irrigation system, okay? And I'm gonna go and make this very clear and be upfront, straightforward with you. In no way, shape, or form am I an irrigation professional. But I do have enough knowledge with it. Uh, I've installed my irrigation system here at the house. I've installed the irrigation system at my shop. I've installed the irrigation system out here on the bluegrass and the other fescues we have over here. So with that said, I do know a little bit about it. Now, you can take this info and run with it. You can use it or whatever. I'm just simply going to show you how I go about it in my mind to lay out my irrigation system and you know it might give you some tips or tricks or whatever and then again you might not learn a thing you may already know all this. What I do want to make sure that you know is I'm not a professional irrigation guy so you may see some of this done and it may not be completely up to snuff the way you know, a, a, a irrigation guy that does it day in and day out does it, but you know, I'm okay with it. Okay, so to start off with, very first thing on my list, hands down above any other thing that I do, I'm gonna lay out the system or the heads or the zones in such a way that it benefits my turf, okay? And what I mean by that is, I've seen hundreds of irrigation systems that in my opinion, as a, as a grower of turf grass, the irrigation system is installed incorrectly, okay? Now, they may have put the irrigation system in based on a certain budget. They may have put it, on, put it in based off the, the installer putting it in, didn't have a flipping clue what they were doing, you know? It could be many, many reasons why I personally feel like the system was in, installed incorrectly, but that's my number one 
main concern is I want it to benefit the turf. I know you're thinking, Pete, but well, that's just, that's crazy. If you just go ahead and put all the heads in and, you know, evenly space them apart and all that, then you're good to go. Water's water, right? But that's wrong uh, from a turf grower perspective. Uh, and and this, is, this is what I mean by that. You see right here on this edge right here, where I got these weeds coming up in my beds right here, and y'all probably looking at it and say, dang, that don't look all that great. You're right. I'm gonna have a main line come up, and that main line is gonna run down through here. I'm gonna try to keep all my valve boxes in the natural area, simply because the fewer valve boxes I have out in the grass is the less opportunity I have to tear one of them up, right? So if I keep them all in my natural area, I'm less likely to hit something. So I'll have a main line come up off the well. It's probably gonna come straight up here, make a T and run all the way down here. And based off what I've seen on irrigation systems around here, the zones would run this way, long ways like that. And a head would start here and you go out a little ways and put another head and go out a little ways and put another head. What this head right here is gonna do is it's gonna point this way and pop up point this way and it's going to spin around like so when it gets here it'll stop and it'll rotate back around 180 degrees back and forth back and forth okay let's stay in this same line and walk out here and let's see what this head's going to do so i haven't measured anything off yet but i'm just guessing at it ballpark we'll get about right here and call it right this head has to cover more area. It's gonna do this, okay? It's gonna go full circle and keep going and keep going and keep going. At the same time, that head is doing a 180. So I got a 360 circle here. I got a 180 circle there. 180 is not a circle, is it? I got a 360 circle here and a 180 half circle up there. So what I'm saying is if I run this zone for 10 minutes, that head out there that's doing the 360 puts out half the water as this head right here does, you know, running a 180. I know exactly what you're saying. You can just simply change the nozzles to make them equal up. Well, you can, but I take it a little bit further than that. And what I mean by that is this area, this strip right here, of grass, uh, you could probably come out about uh, 15, 20 foot or so, roughly. This strip gets quite a bit of shade during the middle of the day, okay? Uh, yes, the sun is wrapped all the way back around and you're, what you're seeing now is seven o'clock sun on it, which isn't blistering hot, so there's no, no damage, no, no harm there. But from Roughly midday up until uh, I'm gonna say if that's seven o'clock, probably around the four o'clock time frame, midday to four o'clock, five o'clock ish, something like that. This section here is shaded by my cryptomeria. Now, when I come out here to my 360 head and I'm right here, this get, never gets shade ever, all day. Uh, from the time the sun comes up to the time that the sun goes down, this right here is full-blown sun. So what does this mean? Well, it means the area of turf uh, that's going to be in the shade a little bit more than opposed to the area of turf that's going to be full sun, the water requirements are going to be different. You know, this part of the grass right here, when it gets super hot, super dry, may look a lot better or, or may be tolerating the overall heat better than say the grass out there in the full sun. So that means I might want to water that out there in the full sun more. So it can't be on the same zone, okay? Because I don't want to have to come out here and manually turn this head off just to be able to run the, the heads out there in the full sun. I want this line right here that's gonna do 180s on a totally and completely separate zone, okay? So my lines, my main line's gonna come up, and I'll branch off of that, and I'll run one zone all the way down this edge right here, and that'll be one zone of irrigation. It'll probably be uh, one, two, three, four, maybe five heads on this zone, or maybe, uh, 
You know what? I'll make another video here in a minute and I'll do the measurement and lay that out. So it'll be maybe four to five heads right through here and they'll all be doing the 180. So I hope that's making sense to you. I, I may want to water this shady area. Of course, again, it's not shaded right now because the sun's then wrapped around, but midday, all of this area is shaded about as tall as the trees are, about 20 foot out, this is shaded. And so I may want to micromanage this area of water differently than I do out there in the full sun. Therefore, I want it on a z different zone. I need it on a different zone to be able to do that. I don't want to necessarily come out here and turn off each head along the, the row here and then just let those run. I don't I need more convenience than that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it is what it is. So I'm going to go through the extra trouble of putting the extra zone right here and call it a zone. And then I'll go out in the uh, open area with the full sun, make that a zone. And then, you know, maybe one more over here in the open area and make that a zone. So somewhere else, I'm going to do it uh, pretty much the same way like that is I'll have one zone running alongside the road here and there'll be my 180 heads, which most people do that. I have seen them to where it'll be two or three heads along the, the edge here and then two or three heads out in the middle of the yard doing 360s. So again, you got 360s and 180s uh, edge of the road where you know, all the trouble happens, the concrete gets hotter, the asphalt gets hotter, the rock gets hotter. And so I may need more water here than I do out in the middle of the yard. So just another reason to have this on its own separate zone. Dude, this grass right here is thick as the hair on the dog's back. I need to get out here and mow it. I've been letting it go about 10 days in between mowing because it's non-irrigated and I've been preserving it and boy you can tell look at that I'm telling you that is so important to stay off the grass when it's hot same thing back here where it butts up against my neighbors I'm going to run a zone of irrigation down through here there'll be 180s that way I can you know control this differently and i don't really have to worry about nozzles and all that kind of thing because i've got one zone right here and they're all doing the same thing you know, i don't really have to be so detailed in making sure i got this nozzle to match up with that nozzle and all that kind of thing keep it simple and out here in the open of course this is going to be full sun all the time all of these will be 360 heads you know do a full 360 and it's probably going to end up being about three maybe four zones again i haven't walked and measured it out yet but i'm thinking three to four zones out here and all of these zones out here will be separate from my 180 zones that'll kind of go around the border and that way you know i can uh, it's much much easier for me to micromanage my watering when I do it that way, it just, it is. So as y'all know, uh, if you've been following me for any length of time, all this is gonna be uh, GCI Turf Blue Heat. It's the same mixture that I've got out here in one of these test plots. And when we get the seed talk, uh, I'll go over and show it to you. And all this is gonna be Kentucky Bluegrass and we're gonna keep it cut really, really short. I've had absolutely no issues uh, whatsoever growing it right here so i don't see why i can't grow it out here so you're more than welcome to follow along in the renovation process uh the, my reasoning for renovating back here is really a twofold reason number one i'm gonna change grass types and number two i'm gonna install irrigation now if i wasn't going to change grass types i could simply install irrigation if i wanted to uh, but since I'm changing grass types, I have to kill everything off anyway. So it makes sense to go and put the irrigation in. Now we're going to do a lot of grade work out here, fill in the ditch, uh, fill in this little waterway right here, get everything nice and level and smoothed up so we can reel mow, uh, use the outlet out here and cut it down really, really short. And you know, you need a nice smooth surface for that. So uh, I'm pumped up. I'm ready. So if this is something you were thinking about doing already before you 
met me. Uh, I've got a guide, a renovation guide that is freshly updated and been tweaked a little bit and got all the latest and greatest info in it. And I'll link that up in the description for you below. Uh, it kind of walk you through the whole process step by step by step uh, in case you don't know where to start or what to do. And it will uh, take you through start to finish. Say my barbecue just showed up. So I'm gonna go up here and fill up my belly right quick. And I'm gonna try to jump back out here while I still got a little more sunlight and film the other video and we'll lay out the heads in that one and kind of give you my thought process on that. As always, I appreciate you taking time out of your day to watch. I'll check you later.